Netflix needs to delay the One Piece IRL adaptation, and if they don't, it's going to be an absolute flop. So the IRL adaptation for One Piece is going to be released very soon, and if you haven't seen the teaser trailer, let's walk through it very shortly and show you how they're about to destroy One Piece for every fan out there that has not seen it yet. So we start off immediately with the going merry in the very first shot, because, you know, screw the whole Usopp saga, right? Apparently Luffy now sees the going merry and is extremely attached to her. And to start off, the one thing that's pissing me off the most, apparently Luffy is in front of the Bariati, which is the Sanji arc. Why? I, I don't, I don't know. I don't fucking know. And what is this red shirt with a hood on it? What is this? Is he supposed to be dressing like a child? I, I, I don't understand. And then we get to the first thing that's actually pretty cool about this whole thing, and that's Robert Nozuro. He actually looks pretty sick, I'm not gonna lie. But then we get to the first sin of this fucking dumb teaser. And that's Nami. Nami does not look like that. Nami? Lord, have mercy. Looks like this. This is Nami, okay? You fucking mess with my queen. Yeah, where are her tits at? And then we get our first shot of Shanks going up against not one beast, but now apparently three. I think it's three at least. I don't actually know. And then we get to see Buggy the Pirate and Jesus, he looks like a fucking fever dream. I don't even know what this is supposed to be. But honestly, there's one thing that really pisses me off and I started to notice this as I'm watching the teaser trailer. Luffy talks too much. In the actual show, he doesn't talk that much. The only time he actually talks is like during fights. Other than that, it's like, give me food or where's the guy to fight? That's pretty much it. He doesn't have a lot of lingo or dialogue and then the actual anime and in this anime i see that they're gonna do that which takes away from his character because it's kind of cool how he doesn't talk a lot and he just handles his business so let's talk about the cgi in this teaser trailer we see his first gomo gomo no pistol and honestly it's not terrible i'm just gonna have to see a little bit more off the rip but it seemed to come out august 31st which again it's not that i'm not excited to see the actual anime it's just that off of the rip of this teaser trailer already it seems that it's going to be very bad and let's be honest this is a hard animated tackle it's literally the king of all shoni but let's go back to whenever sonic the hedgehog was doing its thing and they started their movie and they dropped their trailer and everybody was like no what the hell is this and when they went back to fix that shit post everybody and i mean everybody they're going on their third movie now the franchise was actually saved by doing that. Another one to consider is Mario. You guys didn't realize Mario was probably the most gross movie in the past year, and that movie was also delayed. They rewrote the story, Nintendo got a hold of it, and they gave what the fans wanted. Either way, there's tons of movies or games that have been delayed that were saved because they were delayed. Now, Netflix is probably not gonna listen to any of us, and they're probably gonna do their own thing, and the show's gonna flop. Let's talk about Cowboy Bebop. The show, the anime, phenomenal. Masterpiece of a show. Spike is an absolute great character. The supporting cast around him is amazing. And when Netflix did their own thing, they fucking ruined it. They went the complete opposite way and the show flopped and they didn't get a season two. Now, why is that? Because these idiots at Netflix thinks it's a good idea to just rewrite the whole story and just do whatever the fuck they want. I don't know why they do this. It's actually dumb. Why would you invest millions of dollars making this show when you know it's gonna fail? So apparently they're gonna start off with Romance Dawn. If you don't know Romance Dawn, it was actually the starter package basically for One Piece. Romance Dawn was just a spinoff that really never came to fruition. If you don't really know the storyline, basically Luffy meets up with Nami and apparently his grandpa is wanting him to be a pirate too and yada 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 and his grandpa and Luffy and Nami are going around and there's a whole thing. It's a whole thing. You got to just go read it, watch it. I think there's a movie on YouTube you can go watch it. But why start off with that? It has no correlation whatsoever to the show and honestly isn't showed until like episode, what, 700? Actually, I correct myself. It's not brought up until episode 907 of the original anime, Romance Dawn. The very first episode of the story is going to be a Romance Dawn. This is going to be consistent with the manga, which begins with Romance Dawn. Fans will likely see a flashback of Luffy in this episode and how he ended up with the iconic straw hat and this is what i'm saying with netflix not understanding the show shanks gave him the straw hat in the original chronological timeline romance dawn was not a real thing it's not canon i don't know why they're choosing to start off with this the shot of the coastal king that fans saw in the teaser trailer was likely from this episode another interesting character who will appear in the first episode of the series is shanks furthermore fans will also get to see the red hair pirates who will become more relevant moving forward in the story again that's fine as long as they don't overkill it because we know that the red hair pirates are not that relevant they're just known throughout the world as being one of the strongest pirate crews so then we go on to the next episode 
episode where it's the man with the straw hat. And apparently it says that the following episode named Romance Dawn, the man with the straw hat, appears to be next. Luffy sets out on his journey nearly 10 years after he is entrusted with the straw hat by Shanks. On his journey, Luffy encounters the Coastal King and, much to the surprise of everyone, he takes him down with a single punch. Luffy also encounters Kobe and defeats Alvida, all of which will likely be a part of this episode. It is also very much possible that Luffy and Zoro meet in this episode since Zoro's first meeting with him comes in Shell's town, which is not too far away. Now again, me personally, I think that this should be the very first episode. I don't know why they're going to start off with Romance Dawn, but I... So the next episode is Tell No Tells, and apparently it's where they meet up with Buggy and Nami for the very first time in Orange Town. And again, I don't want to see Buggy again because Buggy looks fucking creepy. He looks like the It Clown, Pennywise. Buggy's supposed to be funny and awesome and cute. But from there, the next episode is The Pirates Are Coming, and everybody knows this one. This is where we see God D. Usopp. Yes, he is part of the D Clan. I don't care what anybody says. And pretty much everybody knows how that goes. But again, it feels kind of rushed. Now, I will say this. KT brought up a, a perfect point to me earlier, basically saying that the first 50 episodes were very well paced, and it was actually pretty fast to get to episode 50. Basically, there was a lot of stuff that happened in there, which, you know, I, 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 I agree. But in four episodes, we're starting off with Romance Dawn. Then, apparently, we're going to be introduced to Red Hair Shanks. Right after that, we're going to see Buggy. And also on top of that, we're going to see Zoro and Nami in the first three episodes, four episodes. And then right after that, we're going to basically find Usopp within five episodes. I mean... Again, it seems a little rushed. Now, the next couple of episodes, they seem okay. One is Eat at Barati. The next one after that is the chef and the chore boy. The next one after that is the girl with the sawfish tattoo. And then the last episode of the season one will be worse in the East. Now, Eat at Barati and the chef and the chore boy, obviously we know what's going to happen there. They're going to meet Sanji, yada, yada, yada. They're going to obviously end up fighting Don Krieg. And then obviously they have to go back to get Nami at, you know, Arlong. Now, this is where I want to stop. Listen, if you're going to watch the One Piece IRO adaptation. Now, this scene right here is very important. And if you know the anime, you know why. It is absolutely incredible. The fact that Nami betrayed everybody and did what she did to the Straw Hat Pirates, and they still had her back, especially to this point. Nami was such in a down place, she didn't know what to do. The only thing she knew what to do was just to get money so everybody else on the island would not get hurt. So what she did was admirable, but obviously kind of wrong, but Luffy still had her back. And on top of that, Sanji just becoming a pirate of Straw Hats, complete loyalty straight up and Zoro having their back as well and God D Usopp as well. The walk towards them, the fight at Arlong, all that kind of stuff was absolutely immaculate. L l listen, listen. If they do this fight right, I will forever, forever support this IRO adaptation. That's all they need to do. Okay? They need to do this fight right. Not only that, they had to set the emotion Everything needs to be perfect in this because this was a top three moment in all of One Piece. And One Piece has what, over almost 10, 1,050 episodes? I had so many. This being in the first 50 episodes and it being that detrimental to the anime, they have to get it right. And if you do, you're going to make a masterpiece, Netflix. I'm telling you right now. And if it's not right, you guys need to delay the damn fucking show and just wait and just get it right. Just get it right. Leading into the last episode, which is going to be called The Worst in the East. Now, let me give you a rundown of this and let's read it out. Worst in the East is likely going to be the finale of the Netflix One Piece live action series. It is going to cover the events of Lutown Ark, the island of the beginning and the end. This is the place where the famous pirate king, Goldie Rogers, was born and executed and is going to be the final place where Luffy and the Straw Hats visit before they enter the Grand Line. Fans will be introduced to so many iconic characters such as Smoker in this arc. Furthermore, Alvida and Buggy are going to make a return in this arc as well. Above all, Luffy's 30 million berry bounty will be on display in this arc and he will become the most wanted man in the East Blue. Now, this part is also very important. I'm not going to spoil it, but most of you guys that watch the anime, you know why. We're introduced to somebody who is going to shape the show in 30 different ways to Sunday. This guy, you guys know what I'm talking about. And if you don't, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna put a picture here. And if all you guys out there know what I'm talking about, when I have this picture right here, you see, yeah, that guy. He's gonna play a, an important role. I mean, he plays an important role the entire show. He is literally, guys, you know, he's him. He is literally Himothy. But anyways, I digress, guys. I'm pretty sure they're gonna speed run this show. Again, it's gonna cover about 55 episodes of the anime right before they enter the Grand Line. And I kind of have high hopes for them. So, Netflix, here's what I got to tell you. If your episode seven is not right, the girl with the sawfish tattoo, and Nami does not start stabbing her fucking arm, and then Luffy comes over with his hat and goes, don't worry about it, and then goes and Chad walks all the way until he beats the fuck out of Arlong, I'm gonna find you, and I'm gonna do unspeakable things to you in GTA course anyways i hope you guys enjoyed the video if you did make sure you guys leave a like there's plenty of videos like this that we do we just did a video on the one piece we solved it yeah we solved it 
You guys should go watch that. There's plenty of room in the Anime Dojo right here. All my Dojians, you guys can just join in. All you gotta do is hit the subscribe button. Anyways, it's Anime Dojo and we're out.